Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Team Talk Live. I am your host, Ann Dillard, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I primarily work with teens and their families. And so what I say is Team Talk Live is where we impact the lives of teens and those who love them. And so tonight, I'm just going to check. And I'm licensed and make sure that this, this is coming out. Uh oh, is that my is that my speaker? No, that's mine. So oh. I'm just <laughs> I'm just making sure I do my mic check and okay <laughs> and all that good stuff. So tonight I have the honor and the privilege of having Miss Daphne Jordan here, and I'm like, this is one of the most powerful women that I've met. Oh. I moved to Atlanta. Oh my. And, yes. And being in her presence, I mean, and let me tell you, I met um, Daphne at a, um, a women's day conference yes. <laughs> and it was a women's day conference, like none other that I've gone to because here she is at the women's day conference giving and really truly empowering women on how to protect themselves mm -hmm. right and and i'm i left there thinking oh my goodness my life was truly changed right so <laughs> daphne welcome welcome <laughs> well thank you thank you so much i had no idea i didn't get to speak with a lot of you after um last year's conference so i'm honored that uh you felt that way about that day, I felt honored to be there because if I can just help change or save one life, I feel like my mission has been accomplished. So I really feel like you're being generous with your comments, but I do appreciate it. You know, I, I thank you. And, and actually, I really, I believe that, okay, so let me back up and give a little background. When I came to the conference um, last year, September, I had been in Atlanta probably two weeks. Oh and my. To coming to, your con to the conference where you were speaking at, one of my girlfriends who had driven me down from Minnesota, you know, she was with me one day and we, I stopped at the gas station. She's like, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the gas station. I need some gas. And so she's like, girl, you're going to have to make some changes if you're going to survive in Atlanta. <laughs> and, and so when I got back in the car, she's like, you got to check your environment. This is not the gas station you want to be, um, you know, shopping at. And then my husband, he, you know, he gets like, you got to lock the doors. You got to make sure this, you got to make sure that is, is in place. And right. I'm like, Oh my goodness. So, and then coming to hear you just really solidify um, my, you know, plan to protect myself. So thank you. And, and tell the world a, a little bit about what you do. Okay. Well, I am a native of Atlanta. Um, and I, I would say I'm probably like 90% of the women out there. It takes for an event, a tragic event to happen in order for me to realize I need to do something. And that in fact did happen about three years ago. I, I left home, you know, I felt like I knew my neighbors. I didn't set my alarm and went off to jury duty, came back home and my front door was wide open. Oh, wow. I just remember feeling like, oh my God, did my husband, <laughs> did he forget to close the door? Um, and so I went across the street, got my neighbor. He looked inside and he said, let me go get my gun. And I think back now, and I and I, I I remember what that feels like, you know, now as a as a uh, responsible gun owner. But anyway, he came inside and basically said, "Yes, you guys have been someone robbed you. Someone's broken in here." The police came, and I do work from home sometimes. And the police officer said, "You need to consider buying a gun." Well, back then, crime um, was kind of rampant in some of the communities. We were having break-ins here and there. And so it was happening, I would say, more often than we would probably want. And before I decided, Anne, to go buy a gun, I wanted to start the Women's Gun Club because I felt like there are other women out there like me um, who want to do it responsibly. We want to do it together. We want to learn together. And it, it, it would empower us at the same time. So I looked up, uh, researched Women's Gun Club, and I found um, the Well-Armed Women. 
And the Well on Women is founded by Carrie Lightfoot. She um, is the founder of that organization. There's over 359 chapters in the United States. And I became the chapter, one of the chapter leaders here in the state of Georgia. And they really embraced me and taught me the ins and outs about um, gun ownership, gun training. They said though, well, we're gonna teach you what we can, but you're gonna have to become a firearms instructor. And I just remember feeling like a firearms instructor, they exist, but I kind of felt like, well, since I've never heard of very many of them, this, this may be something that I should, you know, be involved with to help other women like myself. So to make a long story short, I became a firearm, a firearms instructor, and I was the only female in the class. I was the only African-American in the class. I knew then that this is a very, um, I would say, great area for a lot of us. But the class, it was um, it very intense. It was extensive. It was thorough. And I came out with my certification. So I am a NRA basic pistol certified um, instructor. I prefer to instruct women only because there is an apprehension for us to even go to the gun range. And I remember what it felt like for me to go the first time myself. It was very intimidating. And um, I wanted to just help educate, equip, and empower women. So I became a firearms instructor a little over two years ago, a year after that event happened. But I did that primarily to become a, a responsible gun owner and I did end up, you know, purchase, I have several guns now. Um, and I will not hesitate if I have to in the event that I need to protect myself, my husband and or my family, I won't hesitate. And, and I'm, I'm more, I would say confident about it because I have the training. And I am adamant about women today, not waiting until something happens. Let's not do that. Let's not wait until... Uh, we're in this relationship and we realize the man is crazy, right? And you know, he already has a gun. So now we're out trying to figure out what we need to do. Um, it is a process for women. It's definitely a process. It is not as easy as just going into Nordstrom's and picking up a pair of shoes. It's just right. not that easy and simple, I would say, because you really need to try the gun before you buy it. You need to know um, how to completely operate it. And you need to have a you need to have made a conscious choice and decision that that is the mode of protection that you're going to go for at at any given point in time. Because if you start second guessing yourself, then you really can't show up to the gunfight with a knife. You got to it's got to be even and even um, on an even playing field. So. I know that this is a topic that is very taboo in our community. I didn't grow up around guns. My, my grandfather had them. And I, I feel like we need to look at the fact that guns are not bad. It's the person behind them and the intent that will make um, what happens uh, right. be a bad you know, situation. But the gun definitely can't do any more than the person behind it will, will do to it or cause it to do. So I, I, I got certified in that. And then I realized as I was training women on the lethal side, I had some women that were just not ready. So I did become certified to teach situational awareness classes, which are the refuse to be a victim classes. Those are the ones that I brought into the church where I actually talk about ways to go to the ATM, um, how to buy gas and be safe. Um, we need to stop wearing headphones when we're jogging, you know, just little tips and um, tips of the trade to kind of keep you safe when you're out. Right. So that has been a very helpful, um, I would say, point of discussion for women that aren't quite ready for the lethal. I definitely would not want to put a female in a position to um, carry a gun if she's not ready. So there are other options. Right. And um trying to think what else did I miss here because I do oh, so much. So, I mean I'm thinking about me you know having grown up in the church mm -hmm. and the idea of having a gun is like <laughs> oh <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of scary but I do understand that if you have it you need to be ready to use it yes you cannot you cannot think twice about it you'll talk yourself out of it and that defeats the purpose um, of even having it in the first place. You have to have 
and almost an innate confidence about what you're doing and the assurance of knowing that you don't deserve for that person to take your life. Wow. You deserve to protect yourself. Um, and so that does take a lot of strong will. And that's why I go back to saying we as black women, we are strong, but this is a mental process when it comes to just making the decision to become a, a, to carry a firearm. That's a, that, that's a very conscious decision that you have to make. You have to practice a lot. You need to not just show up and take a class here and there and then feel like, oh, I've mastered it. No, you need to be at the gun range at least once a week if you can. <laughs> um, it's, it's something that is an ongoing learning process and you want to practice in the mirror. If you want to practice in the mirror at home, if you feel like someone's coming into your bedroom, you want to already have those steps laid out. You want to plan, prepare to protect yourself. Wow. And see, with we're a little different than men. You know, men can just pick up a gun, and most most of them, um, but they can just pick up a gun and they can literally just use it. We do take a little more. We put a little more thought into it. And so I would just say, like yourself, I grew up in the church. My grandmother lived right across the street from the church. Would never put her hands on my granddaddy's gun. Um, we're just living in a different day, and right. and I must say that we have people that are trying to take out grandmothers. Some have taken out grandmothers. Um, we have people that just have lost their souls and their minds and they are taking innocent lives. Whereas I feel like if we change the narrative a little bit and we get them to think twice about um, approaching any woman at any given time, then perhaps we can change the narrative and there will be a shift in what we're seeing happen today. Um, when it comes to women being attacked or, um, you know, vic crimes, uh, victims of crimes, as well as domestic violence. Right. And, and when you say shift the narrative, I can see the benefit of shifting the narrative to women are so vulnerable in that sense, you know, that I can, I can overpower her. I can do whatever I can have my way with her. Right. And, um, and to a, a, a thinking of, well, I'm not sure what she packing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I better watch my step. Exactly. Exactly. And it also comes with um, having a level of authority. Um, it's at the point now when people are walking towards me and they're asking me for money, my hand goes up, especially if I don't feel comfortable. I mean, it's something as simple as that. My hand goes up and I'm actually moving away from them because I'm letting them know, I'm no, stop. I don't have whatever it is that you need or want. I'm not engaging in this conversation. The Lord hadn't spoke to me today um, to give you whatever it is you're asking me for. And normally when you put, when you're assertive, then you want to put yourself in a position to be in a position to get out of that uh, position. You don't want to move forward where that person can actually grab you and pull you towards them. But it's, it's little things like that, that you have to now tell yourself, you know, you, sometimes you just can't help everybody. Everybody's not out there with good intentions. And so you, God gave us something that he did not give man. And that is intuition. intuition. And we definitely need to start using that intuition. Most of the time, if it doesn't feel right, guess what? It's not right. So we need to act on that. And we override that intuition to the point where we don't even realize if it's working because we don't override <laughs> it so often we do we do wow. and then we regret it later um but if we just go with our intuition i always say you think long you think wrong um yes. but if your right mind your first mind is your right mind you should go with that and if you don't feel that what's happening is is safe then you need to have in your mind a plan to let that person know, no, I'm not the one. And you either need to have, like you said, pepper spray, a stun gun. You need to have something. If you're not ready for the lethal, you need to have something with you that lets them know that you're not going to be a victim today. Exactly. And something that you said at the last conference that really resonated with me, you said, a lot of times women are too friendly and we talk too much. <laughs> so, you know. You were so really listening. I was. <laughs> because I came prepared. I'm like, this year, I'm going to up my game and I'm going to get this, this, this. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, 
And so, you know, I've, I've watched that I've changed my behaviors now when I'm at the gas station and mm-hmm. somebody come in and asking me, can I get a dollar? I'm like, you need to get away from me. And yes. you know, it's like, and I have to say it without smiling and without feeling badly. Right. Well, and, and because it's your life. I mean, that you could be the person that he is trying to take advantage of. And you should not feel bad about that. I mean, right. when we try to measure how much our lives are worth in, we really can't put a dollar value on it. Our, we are precious gems. Um, we should not think twice about in that particular situation. You know, I just, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Goodbye. I mean, there, I don't see anything wrong with that. I really don't because we have so many other opportunities to give. There's so many other ways. And, and, and let's be honest, we should not be at a day and age where men feel that comfortable asking women for anything. Okay. That's a whole nother talk show. <laughs> that, that sure is. Cause that's one of my pet peeves. I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> I know. So that's the part I have to put. We, if we really put ourselves in what I say, the order of the man and the woman, the man shouldn't be asking the woman for a dollar. He shouldn't be asking us for a penny. If you really think about that. So that's why I'm not apathetic, empathetic, sympathetic, none of the thetics <laughs> when it comes to my life. Like, and, <laughs> and yeah, right. It's just, you know, I, I understand you're having a rough day or, you know, rough time. But no, there are times when I may feel compelled to give. But when your gut is telling you no, then you need to act upon that. I think that is so important. I'm just going to pause and welcome our guests. Hey, Jackie, thanks for being here. And Lynn, um, shout out if you all are still here with us because I am talking to the expert, Miss Daphne Jordan, and she is just spitting knowledge and um, I'm excited about it. So let me know if you are still watching. Cheryl, thanks for being here. Krista and Joseph, thanks for joining. So one of the things that you said that really kind of changed my mind is you said somebody's going down more than likely somebody's going down and I would prefer that it's not me (laughs) absolutely and so I'm like yeah how am I gonna make sure I'm not the one going down (laughs) <laughs> yeah absolutely and we're gonna have to make sure you're not the one going down so look I already looked up the meeting dates I, I know it's the third Sunday of every month I already looked up the classes and the cost <laughs> so I'm working yes. my way there okay but, well that's you know what it is definitely something to work towards like I said it's a it's a decision that once you make that decision you don't want to get there and then back out um we got to go full throttle and 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 i'll be real honest with you once you start oh my god and you're gonna love it oh i I just go to the gun range like i go to the spa (laughs) i absolutely i love i love going to the gun range um it is something that is a great stress reliever but it's also something that i know that i'm doing to continue to uh build my craft and my skill set so i'm gonna go back to something that you said one thing that I tell women all the time is this, as, as, as strong as we think we are and as bad as we think we are, because we will give a man a huge fight over the phone. You know, that's why I said sometimes we just be talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we'll go here and there. Let me tell you something, women. We are not going to win a fight with a man. Now, you got to be a real strong woman if you can take a man down with your hands. And that's the part that I'm trying to get us to understand is you're not trying to get in a, in a fight with the man. You're trying to put yourself in a position to put some distance between yourself and that person so you can leave and be alive. That's what you're trying to do. You're not trying to, you know, I'm going to show you, you know, we got a lot of them these days that, you know, they want to go toe to toe. Oh, I'm not trying to go toe to toe with you. And so I already know that non-lethal may not bring Ray or Tay down, but my Smith and Wesson or my Glock or any of the other ones that I have may do exactly what it needs to do. And this is the mindset that I'm speaking of. This is not a game. 
because to them, they already have a plan and some of them sit around and that's all they do is plan their attacks on women. It's disgusting. <laughs> I mean, it's disgusting. And what makes it even more disgusting is they're successful at it because we're occupied. We're on the phones. We put our purses in our seats. We don't lock our doors. We're just walking around like, oh, girl, you know, I'm just doing this and doing that. And, and Ray is walking right up behind you. And it's going to take all of your hard earned earn earnings. But it's more of a mental thing. If you've ever been violated, that takes some time to get over. I didn't even want to live in my house anymore after we were broken into. I, di I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel comfortable. So that's what I mean by if it hasn't happened to you yet, use this time to plan, prepare, to have some type of protection because you don't want to be in a position where you're saying, I should have, would have, could have. So plan, prepare, protection. Yes. The three P's. Plan, the prepare, three P's. protection. And Pastor Bruinton said, I talk to my daughters all the time about being aware of their surroundings and don't be so nice. I mean, yes, <laughs> I'm learning not to be so nice either. <laughs> and, I, and I think that's a good lesson. Pastor Bruinton has teen daughters who are seniors in high school. And mm -hmm. so, so Daphne, talk, I, I know last conference, you talked a little bit about teenagers. So, so talk to the teenagers about, because we have teen dating violence. We have teenagers going to college, mm. you know, getting ready to go to college or finishing up high school. What are some of the ways that they can protect themselves because you gave us some really amazing tips um and so i just want my audience to hear what are some of the ways they can protect themselves well one it's knowing who your real friends are mm. um you know that's i was a teen so i remember thinking everybody was my friend and there was somebody in my circle that you know either that was jealous and they, and they ended up wanting to fight me or whatever the case may be so the first thing is really knowing who your true core friends are, mm -hmm. um, identifying that early on and developing those real good core uh, friendships is very, very um, important. Yes. And when you find yourself as a teen in a situation, whether you're dating or you're having conflict, it's not a bad thing to, to find someone to help you manage that. Because what I'm finding with our teens today, some of them, mm -hmm. um, they are less prone to talk and they're more prone to go straight to the lethal in some cases. I hate to, you know, be that blunt about it. And so we do need them to find a way. And first of all, just understand you're going to have conflict. That is a stage of, that is an everyday stage of life. You're going to even have that on your job. What I find unique is that we, there, we do certain things at home and at school that we wouldn't do with our employers, right? So that means there's a certain level of respect there. And, and, and so if as a teen, you're not feeling that you're getting a certain level of respect from someone, it's, it may just be best to walk away, leave that person alone. Um, share that information with your parents. Remember, we have been there, done that. Um, so we very well may be able to tell you um, and give you some really good advice on how to handle situations without finding yourself in a situation where it becomes very tumultuous and or you're finding yourself in a position where you're having to fight or, you know, things just get completely out of hand. But I think that's the most important thing or advice I can give teens is when I remember when my son was coming up, I stressed to him, if I don't know your friends, they really ain't your friends because I don't know their parents. <laughs> so I would say, I'm gonna just keep it real. Um, and so we had that relationship in my household where I knew who his friends were, I spent a lot of time at school and just kind of assessing kids' behaviors. That's a tip I would tell parents. If you can get to your child's school and you can assess who some of the kids are that they're saying are their friends, you yes. will find a wealth of information and you will be able to help your child proactively prevent certain things from happening, even with a boyfriend, girlfriend situation, spend that time getting to know your child's friends and the behaviors and the characteristics and remind them of your values. Yes. Because that's another thing is I feel today as parents, we often feel like, well, I, they know what our rules are at home. They're going to remember that when they get to school. Well, peer pressure is at an all new high 
nowadays in elementary school. So you really want to start having these talks in elementary school um, as early as you can, reminding them about your values, their core values, to respect themselves. They're going to have respect for others. And um, just talking about friendship. Sometimes as parents, we need to model friendships for our kids too. Um, that the truth? That is the true. truth. <laughs> yes, it really is. You know, I teach a workshop on healthy relational messages, and that's coming up next Tuesday, a two-hour webinar. So if you all want to register oh, wow. for that, I'll drop the link. Okay. But here's the thing about it. A lot of times, you know, when I teach this to women, a lot of women realize they don't have examples of healthy relationships. Yes. And so therefore, they become unhealthy. They enter into unhealthy relationships and the, this becomes a pattern mm -hmm. and then abuse in, is inevitably the result. Absolutely, absolutely. And even into the reality shows, oftentimes we, as, as some parents are actually watching that to glorify it. And, you know, we should be teaching our, if we're gonna watch it, we should be showing our kids, this is what you should not be doing. Exactly. Um, even though it's on television, just because it is, doesn't make it right or good. And so you, you definitely as, you know, I, I'll be honest, I don't know what has happened. Um, and, but, you know, back in my day, we had a, lo a, a lot of respect for each other. We did. Now I'm, I'm in my mid forties. So I know I'm a little older than the teens, but we did, we just had, we knew what respect was. We respected ourselves. And so as a team now, we do need to reinforce that. We need to remind them of that so that they won't walk around thinking it's okay. I mean, the language now that's being used, yeah. girls are calling each other, bruh. I, I, I just, <laughs> I witnessed it the other day and I was like, oh, this is, this is the new language, calling each other, bruh. You know, that's the that's the, what boys call each other, bruh. So I, I mean, I'm, I'm a little confused by it, but all I'm saying is just, Teens, when it comes to dating, when it comes to relationships, you want to reach for the good. When you see it's turning to the left, you want to get yourself out of that position as soon as possible. And I, I think that's really critical what you said. And the other piece of it, it's back to something that you said, to really tap into your intuition. Yes. And so as parents, we have a responsibility to also stop squelching their intuition we and do validate that they do have these intuitions and it's right and so teach them how to recognize when their intuition is speaking to them you're right because i i hear parents often tell their kids when they're out be quiet don't ask a question and i'm thinking oh no you've suppressed this child's thought process <laughs> um so we have to allow our kids to explore and ask questions it, it, it should be no one else you'd want them to ask a question from but you so you can give them the appropriate answer. So I completely agree with that. And again, I go back to modeling what friendship looks like. If our kids aren't seeing our parents with friends and having friends and socializing with friends and giving us the opportunity to actually have friends outside of school, that's another problem. Some of these kids aren't able to socialize after Friday, okay? And so if you don't give your kids the ability to have relationships, then all they have is what they do at school. So you, we actually have to teach our kids how to have relationships. Oh my gosh, that's so important. Hey, so I'm just going to pause to say welcome to my guests. Welcome, Stina. Glad you joined us. We're talking to Miss Daphne about refusing to become a victim because um, we we have the wherewithal. And, and something that you said, Daphne, that was really critical, we have the legal right hmm. to bear arms. We do. It's a legal, fundamental legal right. <laughs> we, more of us don't. I'm sorry? How come more of us don't exercise that right? Um, I think some of us are doing it. That we're not doing it to the extent of outside of the home and car. So in the state of Georgia, because you know I'm from here, so I would say I would be one of the 
ones that really researches that prop researches our laws when it comes to gun laws more than let's just take you for instance when you first moved here when you yeah. first got here did you just go research the gun laws probably not because you were just getting acclimated to being in atlanta period and that's a conglomerate. About a when i first got here it was it was a conglomerate of information right yeah. so i don't hold it against you but it is something that i would say everyone should keep these three things in mind you have to decide if you're going to become a gun owner, you want to do it responsibly, okay? Because here in the state of Georgia, you can own one and have it in your home or car. However, if you want to take your gun with you outside of your home or car, then you need to become, or you need to actually have what's called the Georgia weapons license. Some people have said, oh, that gives me the license to carry. It is a permit that gives you the ability to take your firearm with you outside of the home or car. So, Anne, when we hear about all these car break-ins, right, oh, at these God. restaurants and people are leaving guns in the glove compartment, that's a no-no. I mean, what good can your gun do you in your glove compartment? Right. Absolutely nothing. Um, we need to start putting guns in the trunk <laughs> so Ray and Tay can't find it, right? Because that's what they're looking for. So it, it's a fundamental legal right. And I think a lot of people aren't exercising it because they don't have enough information and they don't have enough education on it. Wow. That is, that is so true. That is so true. So something that you made uh, clear for me was you can have it in your home. You can have it in your car. And mm -hmm. so something that you said, well, you said a lot of things. That you out. <laughs> but one of the things that you said, you remember it all. <laughs> I, I, look, I'm doing my research. You said if you are in a parking lot and somebody comes at you with, and it seems like they have the intent to hurt you. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. You can... It, if you, you feel your life is threatened. If you feel like your life is threatened, you can defend yourself. You can. But do you need to have your permit? Or you, or you need mm -hmm. to have your permit to be able to defend yourself outside of your car? Yes, you do. Okay, yes, you so do. I got that right. You did get that right. <laughs> yes, you do. Your permit, as I said, it gives you the ability to, to carry it in a holster on your hip or in some of the concealed carry purses that I shared with you all at the conference. Um, so if you feel like someone's running towards you, you don't know what they have, what they're about to do. You feel like, and let's just say they're screaming at you or let's, 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 let's keep it similar to the incident that just happened with the young lady in Clayton County. Her boyfriend was, was, um, was engaged in um, what I would say beating on her she had her gun then she could have fired her gun to protect herself he had one though so he ended up using it on her so you wow. see that's that's what we want to we want to change the narrative right yes because his act his the reason he used the gun was senseless the reason she would have reached for it would have been to protect her life and she would still be here today if she had 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 her gun but yes if you're out i mean georgia is a stand your ground state a lot of people don't want to say it the same way as you've heard it in florida but it is a stand your ground state and if you have your permit if you're out if you feel that your life is threatened and if someone points the gun at you first then yeah you if you feel your life is threatened then you have the right to defend yourself but you need to have your permit. That's the you key. definitely. And I'll tell anyone, if you're thinking about buying a gun at any time, just go ahead and apply for that permit. And you'll like have it when you need it. Or something like that. It's $75. You get it at your local county probate court. Um, and it also makes it easier for you to purchase the gun. You don't have to go through another background check. So that one does the full background check on you. It gives you a license, like your driver's license. And so when you want to go into a store and purchase a gun, you give them your permit, you buy your gun, you walk out the door. Right. And, you know, uh, Daphne, I'm thinking about my audience and a lot of people might be saying, well, that's not a usual topic for Teen Talk Live, but you know what? <laughs> I was thinking about that. <laughs> I, it's an important topic. It because is. Because when I first heard it, I was like, ooh, but then I believe that I've used some of the skills that has kept me safe for the past year. 
Mm -hmm. And so I think it's not a comfortable topic, but when, especially when we're talking about domestic violence, we're talking about violence in the community. Um, I think it's important to know how to protect yourself or know that there are ways out there that you can protect yourself. It doesn't have to be lethal, but there yeah. are ways that you can protect yourself. Well, and since your show is the teen talk, one thing that we're not doing a real good job of that I wanna see us do a better job at is talking to our teens about gun violence and that the guns are not for them, period. However, we should, if we have them in the home, they should be locked and secure. We shouldn't tell them, uh, don't touch it. You know, if, if you're 13 years old, you, that child is old, you can take that child to the gun range with you, okay? Your child, my child knows the safety rules. So if nothing else, we should be teaching children about gun safety. We shouldn't just automatically assume that they, they know they're bad because nowadays that's the one thing they go to um, and they're using them on each other. So we've got to do an even better job of stressing the importance of this is for protection for an adult, <laughs> not for teens or anyone that's under the age of 21. You can get your carry permit at 21. Um, that's what I want to see happen. And I, I've taught the free gun safety classes for kids ages pre-K to fourth grade because, and if you have kids that you're, you've taught the right thing at home. When they go to the neighbor's house, they're gonna remember, my mom told me if I see a firearm just sitting around, don't touch it. Because I don't know if it's loaded or not, right? right? But let's say I'd never told my son and assumed that he knew better. Our children are too curious exactly. to, the, to the point that some things look fake. And the ones that look real, they think they're fake or vice versa. We've got parents, we've got to do a better job of having these conversations with our kids and even talking about the penalties. Like at 13, you can spend your life in prison That's from right. taking someone else's life. That's so right. I, I thought about you inviting me on for that very reason about, oh, what are people going to say? But I think this is a pivotal point for us to remind parents, it is your responsibility to talk to your kids about gun safety, whether you are a Second Amendment uh, believer or not, you need to really have the conversation with them about it. And if you don't feel comfortable having that conversation with them, then, you know, by all means, I don't mind being in the midst of that and sharing some information. And even when I have the next gun safety class for kids, um, I, I will definitely let you know because that class was very, I think it was very good for the age group that we had to teach them early on the dangers and safety protocols that should be in place should they be around a firearm. We must do and more of that. I think that's so amazing because I think the earlier they learn about it, the more they have respect for it and exactly. respect for other people's lives because we're seeing too many gun violence um, situations being perpetuated by our teens. We are, we are, because they're not taking it serious, Anne. There is a lack of respect, like you said, for the gun itself. They feel like it's a toy. Another thing is the games that we are allowing our kids to be exposed to, um, you know, and, and, and you definitely will probably agree with me on this. Kids, they play enough of the game and they see enough of a gun that's being just pulled out and shooting a woman. Don't they want to emulate the things that they see? Don't they want to? It's almost like, okay, I'm going to let you play NBA games. You want to become the base basketball player, right? You let your child look at Grand Theft Auto and play Grand Theft Auto all day. What do you think your child's going to want to do? <laughs> or are we even thinking about it? Are we just letting the game babysit the kids? <laughs> and so my my child doesn't play Fortnite. Like that's the we don't even have that. He doesn't have that access to the game. Someone was telling me the other day, Daphne is really not that bad. I said, no, he doesn't play Fortnite. He doesn't play Grand Theft Auto. He doesn't play anything that will uh, trigger his mind to think any of that is okay at any given time. And as right. parents, we've got to say to ourselves, just because you feel like you have instilled in your child those values now, they get around their friends. And they start talking him into going to the left. That's when it goes to the left. 
exactly so exactly and and see the thing that it does is it conditions your mind does. and and the body doesn't necessarily know if it's real trauma or tv trauma yes it processes trauma the same way exactly and so the kids are seeing so many incidents of violence by the time they're 18 years old yes you know, yes. and that's not good for their minds. It's not. No, but they're being conditioned to think that. I remember gr growing up, like I said, my granddad had one. I never would touch it <laughs> because I knew the damage it would do. And I wasn't even curious enough to want to put my hands on it. Um, and that's what we need to get back to. We need to get back to a place where children understand their place, number one. And then number two, as adults, we are helping them understand your mind is a terrible thing to waste. And the last thing you want to do is put yourself in a position where you're in some court of law now trying to defend your life and or you're, you're in prison for making one bad decision. Whereas if you had just held on to what I had been trying to tell you all this time, we wouldn't even be here. And, and I'm finding and hearing of those situations way more too often with our young black males more than I, I care to even hear about. And so parents are ultimately responsible for their kids. Parents, we have to do a, a better job of what we allow our kids to be exposed to, who we allow them to be around. We need to really encourage them to find something else to do besides play video games uh, where they're shooting people, kidnapping women. I mean, we've got we've to put something else in their minds outside of that, if we want to see our kids less aggressive and, and not doing as much harm as we're seeing them do today. And talk about conditioning them for domestic violence. Exactly. There is one video game and when I looked at it, the only way that they can get rid of the lady was to put gasoline on her and set her on oh. fire. Oh my God. And these are like <laughs> third, fourth grade kids playing this game. And I think it's funny. And, and exactly. And, and so what is that teaching you where your brain isn't developed and you think you have no concept of what's right. happening? So, I mean, we're winding down on our conversation. And again, I want to thank um, mm -hmm. Ms. Daphne Jordan for being here. And Charnel says, who better um, to hear this from? And she says, thank you, Daphne. And Joseph says, teaching respect for firearms is a good point. Sometimes I think we overlook that, especially when we don't have guns in the home. I think exactly. that's a really good point. Very good point. Yes. And he, he went on to say, it's so important for parents to be responsible when it comes to video games. It is really oh. important. It's very, very important. I would say, play the game yourself. If you... <laughs> there are so there's so much technology out there on my phone my son can't download a game without me giving giving him permission so it sends me a message and I look at the game I'll go online I'll research it as long as it's not violent <laughs> it's a game that actually we have been downloading academic games that's what that's what's been the mode of operation but anyway I get to know what my child is downloading on his phone before he does it we've got to kind of get to that point you cannot I can tell my son right now, don't you go across the street and do such and such. What are the kids going to do? They're going to probably go across the street and just try it because they're curious, right? Exactly. Or maybe I should say, if you go across the street, you're going to break your leg. <laughs> you know, maybe he'll think twice then. But our kids often challenge us. They often want to see how far they can go. Um, and so you want to just, you know, again, I go back to what my original um, thought processes have been. When I, when I brought those guns in my home, I sat them down in front of my son. We had a discussion about them. We talked about the do's and don'ts. I even, he has a, he knows what to do if he sees one. Stop, go get an adult, get away. I mean, he, those are the steps. Um, yeah, those are the steps. And so we have to be that adamant. We just need to start engaging in more conversations with our kids and not assuming that they know. And I think that's oftentimes what happens with us as parents. We um, are technologically driven by these iPhones and computers, and that's who's teaching our kids everything that they know. As parents, we're going to have to step in and do what right. we, we were entitled to do. 
And I forgot who says this quote, Daphne, but somebody once said, he who tells, I think it was E.B. White, says mm -hmm. he who tells the story defines the culture. Mm. So mm. if the video games are telling the stories and mm. the TV show and the reality shows are telling the stories and not the parents. And not the parents. Right. Yes, it was defining the culture. And that's why we're seeing more of the stuff that we're seeing. Absolutely. I would wholeheartedly agree with that. Yes. So, you know, I want to thank you and thank you for the work that you're doing in South Fulton. I know that because of the awareness that you brought along with others, I know um, some of the crimes and some of the gas stations have been reduced significantly. Yes. And in South so Fulton, yes. I'm like, kudos to you, <laughs> kudos, keep up the yes. good work. So as we wrap up, Daphne, what is something that you can tell people? Um, you've given me so many tips, uh, <laughs> but what is something that you could tell people, especially somebody going to a gas station yeah. to get gas? What or, or somebody jogging or, you know, doing some healthy exercise. What are some of the tips that you can leave with them um, to take care of themselves so that they don't fall victim? So first I'll start with just being aware. Um, I'll take the gas stations. Nowadays, you need to plan your trips to the gas station and you need to also be aware of the area that you're going in. The, and the way I look at it is I do not let my tank go past half a tank. So I always have a half a tank of gas in a, in a car. So at, at, at any given time, I'm not running out of gas and I'm not stopping at night. So that's also tip number two. You don't buy gas at night alone, women. Um, you just don't unless you can get someone to go with you. And, and when you get to the gas station, make sure it's well lit. Make sure you see signs that say, um, this gas station is under video surveillance. Um, we need something to be able to help the police find them in the event they get away, right? Right. But um, you also want to remember that the slider crimes that we experience, they happen because the bays were so wide. So you want to make sure that you are putting yourself in a position where no one can slide up next to you on your passenger side and take your purse out. So the first thing you wanna do when you get to the gas station and you get outside is take your um, keys with you and lock your door. Before you even get to the gas station, your purse should have been in your trunk. And I know that is a huge inconvenience for us ladies, but I now have little purses that I carry just to have credit cards in them. I don't carry my big purses with me anymore. They're never seen um, by the human eye. So when I'm at the gas station, I have like a little credit card pouch and that's with me. And I lock my doors. I put, I put the pump inside. I pay for my gas. I get back inside my car. I lock my door. But before I've done that, I've already scanned the, the area. You see a lot of people hanging around. You don't need to buy gas there. That's also a very, very bad sign that there's a lot of loitering. Um, and so those are the main things that uh, steps I take when I go to a gas station. I don't go at night. I make sure I fill up at a half a tank. So I'm never without gas <laughs> pretty much. And um, I'm very aware of my surroundings. I do know which ones are pretty much safe and which ones have surveillance mm -hmm. and just follow your instincts. When well, it comes let me tell you about my gas station experience. I'm usual used to be used to be. I'm on my headset. Oh no. I that's before I came to your um session. Oh no. Right. <laughs> so, you know, one thing that you said is people are casing you and watching you way before you showed up. Yeah. And so if you seem distracted, then you are, you know, easy prey. You're an easy target. Um, what you want to come across is someone that's alert, not vulnerable. You want to be that person that says, try me if you want to. You just want to be that person that they overlook because there's more people, unfortunately, that are getting out of their car. Some people are leaving cars running nowadays, which I don't understand that. But we have to have less distractions. Headphones are a big no-no anywhere. Um, I don't even recommend having headphones when you're jogging because you cannot hear your attacker if he's coming behind you. So we've got to make some decisions. Do I want to be comfortable and hear Jay-Z when I'm running? 
or do I want to be alive and thrive? Because I'm, I'm able to hear someone who's coming up behind me. You've got to make some decisions. If you are going to wear headphones, I would say wear the ones where you can leave your dominant ear where it's available to be able to hear. That way you can still hear over here in this left side some of that good music. That's if you got to have it. But I personally don't do that. I, I, I am a huge proponent of no headphones nowadays. Um, it's too unsafe. And especially with college students, that is the biggest reason why most of them are being violated is because they, they have those headphones on. They cannot hear their attacker and they are attacked unexpectedly. Um, so those that you brought up a very good point, less dis be less distracted. When you get to a gas station, even to Publix nowadays, pay attention to who's around you. Notice who's just sitting in their car doing nothing. That's not always a good thing. Um, so just, you know, notice the cars, pay attention. We've got to pay more attention because they are, they have already sought out who they want to victimize. It's disgusting. I know it. But if we can be ahead of the game, then we could possibly be less of a victim. I want to give you a few statistics. Can I share them really quickly? Absolutely. Because this ties into um, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And I kind of want to share this because I just compiled this data from some of the gun classes that I teach. But I want to start out with gun violence is a women's issue. And I'm going to tell you why. 80% of women that are killed annually by firearms are killed by their intimate partner. Wow. 80 percent. Now, 35 states do not prohibit people convicted of misdemeanor domestic violence um, crimes and, and are those that are subject to restraining orders. So think about that. If we could even implement something at, with those 35 states and prevent people with restraining orders from still being able to carry guns and or that have been convicted of a misdemeanor um, domestic violent act, we're at half the battle, right? Wow. 75% of the women that have attended my gun classes are doing it for protection. 75% of the women do not own a gun. And 53% of the women have not been to a gun range. And 76% of the women do not have a permit. So again, I'm telling you, ladies, we have got to change the narrative. 80% of women that have died at the hands of an intimate partner by a firearm is 80% of women. That's a, that is a women's issue. That's and we can change the narrative. You, you can graduate up to the gun eventually, um, get you a good little stun gun, get you some type of protection. But the, the one thing that's free that we have is our intuition. Yes. Sometimes we know we're in a relationship we should not be in. We need to get out immediately. Sometimes we know the area that we're in is not bad. We need to leave, right? So some of the things that we can do are free and we already have them at our fingertips and we just need to act upon them. Wow, those are astounding statistics. Yes. And I'm, I'm like, ooh, 85%? Yes. I mean- In the US, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot, that's a lot. And uh, Daphne talked about healthy relationships and domestic violence. And if you uh, want to test your domestic abuse IQ, I want you to text the word abuse, A-B-U-S-E-I-Q to 555888 to get a test, just a quick test to test your domestic abuse yeah. IQ. Because okay. a lot of people think that domestic abuse is just about hitting, pushing, uh, shoving, mm. pulling hair and stuff like that. And it's oh. way deeper than that. So 555-888 and text the word abuse, A-B-U-S-E-I-Q and you will get that, that test from me. I'm going to take it. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, Miss Daphne, it has been a pleasure. Having I've enjoyed it. On. I, I so appreciate your knowledge. I, I appreciate your advocacy for women and um and teaching us how to protect ourselves it's, it's been like i said life-changing for me awesome. and uh, you know i'll be showing up in some more of your spaces <laughs> okay good i look forward to it yes so thank you again for joining us and just quickly tell the people as we leave um where can they find you and um the the services the products that you offer okay so they can find me online at 
www.packingprettyfirearms.com. So it's exactly the way it's the name of the company is Packing Pretty Firearms LLC. But the website is packingprettyfirearms.com. Um, any of the non-lethal products that they may be interested in is on the My Damsel Pro. I'm going to have to cheat a little bit. <laughs> um, so if they're looking for stun guns or something like that, if they have questions, my phone number is actually on each website. It's mydamsel, D-A-M-S-E-L pro dot net slash Miss 380. Catch it. <laughs> Miss 380. Um, <laughs> I gave somebody that that website the other day and I was cracking. <laughs> so on that website, um, there's actually a lot of good things on there for children. My son and I play a game um, that teaches about safety. If he goes to a friend's house and I, I forgot to maybe tell him, give him some instructions on what to do if someone touches him inappropriately, then I have to move two spaces back. It's a really cool game. But there's a lot of things on that site if someone hasn't graduated to lethal, that they can find to protect themselves. And then um, I can also be found on Facebook, uh, Packing Pretty Firearms, LLC. Excellent. And when we're done, if you could drop that information in our comment section, I'm sure some people oh, sure. would like to connect with you. After Absolutely. This. And um, I'm certainly going to share this out to my clients who are going through domestic abuse situations because mm. it's full of information and um, and just good for parents in general to hear as well. So awesome. thank you, Miss Daphne, for thank being Thank you for here. having me. I appreciate you and keep up all the good work in South Fulton and all over Atlanta. I will. Thank you so much. And thank you for your support and thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Love you all. Join us again right. tomorrow night for another episode of Teen Talk Live. We'll have Miss Alma G. Davis from the Alma G. Davis Foundation, who's an advocate for survivors on awesome. here tomorrow night. All right. Okay. Good night. God bless. Good night.